Well, I'm here and uh, got to carry all this clobber down, as an artist does. And the camera stuff as well. And the light's into my eyes a bit too much at the moment. I want to paint to be with the light as it is. It's better this way. I'll have a look. Favorite spot for the moment. Anywhere in the world, just here. Autumn colours now, beautiful. I don't think I can paint this scene because the sun's smacking my eyes today, but I will another time because the reflections are beautiful. I've got a bit of and furring I've set myself here, up here so I can sit on my little seat there, paint and reach, just reach the paint's okay. Set out the oils and the scene we're going to do. This one reaching from these trees here right across to the sculpture here and just down to this stone here and up into the sky. The sun's just coming over. Could be a bit of a nuisance, but I'm hoping we'll be able to see all right. And the sound in the background's a bit further away this time, so I'm hoping you'll hear me fine. We'll see. My bottle of terps, my usual set of nine brushes there, the filberts and the rounds, um, from zero through to tens. As you see, I've got three rounds, two, four, two and zero, and the flats are ten to zero, going down in twos. They're long-handled nylon, and they're very nice brushes for the price, specialist crafts I use. I've got a jar of terps, my two plastic uh, palettes, there's two pieces of perspex, and a painting knife in case I can use it today. It'd be nice to use a painting knife today a, a little bit. We'll show you how that can work. On my palette then, let's take a look at the colours. We've got burnt sienna, burnt umber. There is a deep purple there, not much of it left though. Lizard Crimson there, then we've got Prussian Blue, Ultramarine Blue, Cobalt Blue, Cerulean Blue. Down here we've got some Turquoise, then we've got um, Viridian Green, Emerald Green and, and a Permanent Green there. Chrome Yellow, Lemon Yellow, um, Yellow Oak I've got to put some more out on now. Uh, cadmium Orange, Cadmium Red and Titanium White. So we'll just put a few more bits of paint out. The uh, radio mic with me again, I'm afraid it's in England. So I hope the background noise isn't too much for you. The painting I did yesterday was a large one, and unfortunately, I don't feel I can use it for you as a demonstration because the background noise is just too much in the end. So hopefully, this one will be alright. I'm not quite sure the direction this one's going yet. I may use a palette knife at the end as well, or at the beginning, and see how it goes. I haven't decided. I haven't shown you knife work yet, so this would be a good time, although it's rather a textural, fiddly piece to do. Um, first of all, I want to work out the composition with just uh, a thin coat. Usually I use a thin coat of uh, lighter colour. I might use a very light blue this time, so it will disappear easily. It'll vanish as I paint anyway, and I use my fingers like this to make the composition. I'm taking what I need and want. Well, I used to about know what I want in this composition already. To do that, I'm going to use a little filbert. I'm going to take a little bit of white. Unfortunately I've got my paints on the opposite side of me this time because I can't uh, reach down as the bank goes down the other side. So I don't want too bright a colour, just a, a light wash. I'm mixing some cobalt blue with a little bit of titanium white at the moment. I've shown you all the colours that I'm going to need today. And let's just work this out. Unfortunately, I've got the sun coming up into my eyes, which is going to be a bit of a nuisance as I go along, but it's often the case when dry air painting, nothing is perfect. Now, what do I want to get in here? I just want to do a loose drawing at first, approximate. So really, I'm trying to lead my eye into the picture. So we're looking here, going right up and through, into perspective, at a single vanishing point. There. We've got another vanishing point going over here as well. Right, so all I'm going to do now is try and make sure everything else fits in. Put more turps in my brush, put more of thin paint, just to gauge where I'm going. I want just enough here to leave light against the tree. These are dark trees, I want the light against them as the river comes through behind here. So I, I do want to get a fairly good drawing to start with. So that uh, my my, my loose painting within that can be uh, correct. What I want to do is get in this tree here. Now I want a path coming down through here, just leaving the eye trickling, coming down that hill here, that bank into here. Now let's work these beautiful trees out into the turps, a little touch of 
Probably bought what I'm using, but it really doesn't matter which colour you use. It's only for drawing out, and when I paint over, it's going to disappear anyway. Right, now uh, here then, we've got that tree there. If you go on behind here, we've got three beauties going on there. we put them a little bit closer together. That's there, that's here. And then it's a difficult one to paint. And so that, it's a bit of a draw even, when I paint. So I'm going to have to squeeze my trees in if I want to get it in all into this painting. I'm going to have to move things around a bit, change it like Constable did because otherwise I'm just not going to get them in. Okay, so I'm just about ready to paint. I've got my basic composition there now. So I just managed to squeeze everything in, change it around a bit to put it all in. Right, I want to start with a brush anyway. Um, and I want to start in the background. I like to work my mid-tones up towards my lights and get almost to my lightest and then work back to my darks and then do my final lights and darks at the very end. We want to be using cool colours in the background. We want to make this the blues here much hazier and bluer and as they come forward much, much warmer. I'm hoping as the sun comes up over here it's going to reflect into the uh, scene a lot more. So, Let's see how we do it. I don't think it's an ideal one for palette knife. I think I'm going to be using a lot more texture again today with the brushes. I'm going to pick up now, I've got my brushes in my jar there. I'm going to pick up a larger brush. I think we'll use about a half inch for this job. So we'll get so it will narrow that way, fit that way. Just wet it with a torch, get it warm. And we'll start to make these colours in the background. It's a lovely um, warm and cool blues and greens going on back there. Um, I'm going to start with some cobalt. A little touch of rose into that. I beg your pardon, a touch of magenta into that. Make it very light. And I just want to bring that through here. That mist coming down through the uh, Leaves here, it's absolutely gorgeous. And we've done it under here, a bit more blue there, you notice. Very blue in the background, very hazy in the background, and I'm just letting my black sort of glow through there, a bit like a watercolour. I'm using the paint very thinly with the turps just to build up this hazy blue background. Right up into here, right through here. Letting the dark just glaze through. And that's going to come right through there to this tree and right through here because this is why I said I wanted uh, this tree to finish here so that I could actually paint behind here and have this tree standing out. And those colours are going to glaze down into the water. Now the technique I'm using at the moment is called fat over lean. It's where we put the thin paint on first, the lean paint, and then we put the fat over the top. We can go in pastel then as well. But at the moment, we're just painting the, the leaner paint. And that will soak into that dark as well, so we need a bit more white. White is called a body colour, because it does thicken things up. I put a little bit of white into it now, we'll suggest that. You see how that gets much lighter there, and I can bring it up and through. The background here into the, the distance right up into the sky here. And our sky should be coming. Let's see. Uh, yes, we're going to have the sky just coming down through here. The sky is going to be coming up somewhere around here. I think. Up into there. We can let the light shine down through there later. That's going to come down through here. Oh, I've got that on my brush. I need to deliberately go to a bit of light right now, just bring that trickling through here, just for fun, but you can already see just how lights, the lights are going to work. So Liam, it's going to come right down into that and through there, trickling down into here. We've already got a feeling of our painting, even now without anything else being done. Because of the dark background. Right, let's start to tint up into here. I'm going to start to add to my colours the cerulean blue now, which is a cooler blue. Just up into here. 
but you've got this light shining through the trees up here. Really light cerulean blue right up here. Comes up into gold here amongst these trees. And the way it comes up here, we've got the light shining through there. Not that really very light at the moment. The light's going to be coming through between those trees as it moves around. And a cerulean blue with some white. A bit more thickly, so now we're painting a bit more in pastel, we're putting the fat paint on over here. More blue into it. We'll to work some pink into there later as well. And the light's coming down more and more through here, so what I'm going to be doing is, as I paint, um, I'm building up my mid-tones at the moment, I'm going to gradually lighten it more and more. We've got a little bit of emerald green into that deep blue I made earlier. And just start to wrap that into here, just little strokes of it. I don't, I don't feel I can do this with a palette now today, I want to use colour using my brushes. And you see, the brush is always being used in the same manner as the leaves, otherwise it can be used with the same sorts of marks as those leaves deserve. I don't to describe, but I'm using it slightly dry brush, dragging it over the surface here. Just that in the background. And the blue mix in with that light blue. So I come down with slightly dry brush there and just push it in. This is called stumbling. When I use the tip of the brush like this, it's called stumbling. It's almost like dry brush, but not quite. It's pushing the paint into here. It takes more of the blue than I had originally. The uh, cobalt. And I'll work that back into here a bit more. Maybe a little touch more of the magenta as well, just to give it a little bit more light and warmth back here. And of course, when we've got one colour happening, put it on our brush, leave it somewhere else, and use it. There's my water. Now let's start to paint vertical strokes. Because I like to paint my depths of smooth water with vertical strokes and then bring in my horizontals afterwards. And this is my horizontal strokes going on now. So I've done my verticals, now I just want to paint in some of the horizontal strip, the feeling of the horizontal and vertical strip, the feeling of the water back here in these reflections. A little bit darker, and you take a little bit of ultramarine, and a little bit of dark sienna, and it's a little bit darker, just a sort of warm grey. Brown and blue will give us a lovely grey. I'm just going to use this slightly warmer brown grey, just back into here to find these shadows a bit more again. And a bit bluer, so a bit more ultramarine, a bit stronger with the blue there. I've got to move my head round, I'm afraid I'm going to get in front of the canvas a bit. I've got to move my head round, either, I've got to either go that way or this way, to stop the sun from being in my eyes. It's soft, hazy back down there, and that colour comes all the way down and into here in the background. I'm just painting background at the moment. More cerulean. A little touch of lemon yellow. I'll give myself a pale green. Mix it with the previous light blue as well. Just to go quite subtly here. And we'll start to find a lighter tone here of these foams. It's coming through to that one. And just out into the Tint up the tip of my brush these greens which are coming out of that really pale blue in the background here. It's still very really pink back there, so I need to add more I couldn't see that before, I need to add more magenta the white. A subtle lovely light colour with these mid greys and blues and, and that warmth is also reflecting in this piece of light up here with little branches and twigs and things like that. Put a little bit of black sienna into that, come a bit further forward so that can show the difference in the warm. So if I start to put a bit of warm here, look how that pushes that right back. And you take a bit of chrome yellow, add it to that green from earlier, this very light green here, and just add to these leaves a little out here. 
and that pushes the colours back again. Get that to reflect. And that green is coming in and reflecting into here too. So we're pushing some vertical strokes here to bring that down. <coughs> Okay, getting rid of all of this now. We want to start working up these colours, these background colours here, because I need to have these darker, cool colours here to put the strong um, yellows against the moment I just need to get grey blues going on behind here. We'll look down over here with this. Even these grey blues will be brown and the cerulean and white and some of the tinting of the um, much stronger blue as it comes up into there. I'm going to take some that's the other one the ultramarine again. Make it um, a bit stronger up here. Add a bit more cerulean into that to make it even more blue. Cerulean and cobalt up here. Put the feeling of light, bring that blue down in these three here. Beautiful blues. Because I've got the light shining through the trees here, I really want to get the effect of that light. I've really got to now start playing with very strong pure colours, especially around here. here. As the sun rises, the colours are going to get stronger and stronger here for me. So I've got to really be aware and I'm going to change colour as well. And I've got to work up these greys over here, green greys, a bit more. Um, green into that and uh, we'll mix it with the celery to make a, a green grey. Let's have to get these colours in here. Be nice. It's going to be a quite a pretty pattern but I hope I'm saying that in the nicest um, uh, term of the, the phrase. It won't be sickly but in chocolate boxes but it will be a the lovely brushes these mine on so gentle and you can put thin washes on like this you can handle acrylics well with them or you can just sink on the paint heavily if you wish to do and it's going to start really working on these colours a lot more take some alizarin and uh, you know, the light is coming through here it can start making things a lot stronger that stronger blue, I'm going to take some Prussian with the alizarin, so I'm really going to start pushing some colours now. That is when my light is coming against the darks. Here I've really got to feel. So the feel that's come in because I can use them like this to both edge on and flat on if I want heavier wider marks. This is the beauty of painting on plein air as well. We see so much more, there's so much more going on, we're much more involved. I much prefer to be out on plein air than we do working in the studio. So I'm putting some of the darks back into the shadows now. That's the beauty of acrylics or oils, we can work either way because we can work lights over darks and darks over lights. I can work whichever way around I want. Put the colour on your brush, you see it somewhere else, then use it whilst it's there. There's so much going on in this picture. Like the big one yesterday, but there's, there's much going on in the smaller painting. So it's uh, a lot of work. That's all I want at the moment is, is, is indications. I just want to make an impression at the moment. So we're not putting very strong colour in, but still various warm and cool greys. Mixtures. Pure colour now. I'm not putting any taps at all with it because I'm painting my fat into my lean. So I'm not going to use black in this painting at all. It's just painted with mixtures of blues and browns to make the greys and the blacks and the blacks. Simply leaving this fairly fairly fairy because I'm going to be bringing lights in amongst that later. I shall be making darker details later. I think it's time I looked at this area here 
I never even completed a part of that there. There's um, the sun is right in my eyes, but it's where I want to make those colours. So let's establish those now. I'm going to take some magenta and add it to white. Really start to try and find some lovely colours there. And if I start to play the warm against the pools here, the light shines down through there. I'm leaving these darks right into there and really make that glow cream in a minute as well. Cream by using cool yellow, lemon yellow. And, um, and white. Start with my white and add a lemon yellow to it. Very light, shining down through here. You know, really, you know, you'll see the painting starting to appear now. I'm putting stronger colours on compared to the previous softer, lighter colours. A little stronger still. leaves are shining behind here. This is what I was waiting for, the sunshine to come out so that I could do just this. Start painting in these stronger lights behind. Really get this effect of light. To here where it's lighter. It's not easy for me because I'm actually painting it and I've got to look at the sun, paint it. So that's not helping me at all. I need to get some turquoise mixed here. And then we'll go back to the cerulean. No black, remember, we're using pure colour. Some more warmth there. I'm going to take some burnt sienna. See if that goes to work. Yeah, that's darker than you are. That's going to be the work. Really got to explain that with these colours. Right, the burnt sienna now is going to give me a much more, more richer. The dark is coming down here, leads the eye in. I'm really being pushed to ease at speed. How did that get in there? I've got some warmer greens down the front here, so I'm going to take some of the Emerald and um, a little bit of black green, and just start to make a warmer green effect just coming up over here. This mossy, mossy effect of the greens just coming through over the black here. And then the rock yellow gets much warmer while I'm up there. I now have to start using some pure cadmium yellow. Stuff mixed up. Touch them up, to touch them up. Much stronger yellow is coming into here. And we've got to go almost orange in places. I want to keep it pure, which isn't easy because it wants to mix with the dirtier colours underneath. I'm being pulled to paint parts I wouldn't normally paint because the light is changing so fast that I know I've got to get those bits done. I'm going to put some more emerald back in with it. And go back into behind the trees here and start to try and pick out the softer textures of the greens here. We could be using a sponge for this, but it's acrylics. I can't because I'm using oils. Bit of a nuisance, but we're not worried too much about that. Let's go in between these and start to find the lights that are shining in between these tree trunks now. Very different sort of scene to yesterday's in that 
of more lights going on here. Starts to, start to indicate some individual leaves and ferns now. Get some of this warmer colour in the foreground. Take some dark sienna again. And uh, start to wrap that in around the warmer areas here. Going up into the trees as well, because be, these closer trees are going to become warm. So I'm taking burnt sienna and working it, which I can do with this, which you can't do as well with acrylics, because the paint is still wet. So I'm able to work these warmer colours into here, which I couldn't do if the acrylic was dry. Could I? And so those warmer colours immediately bring it forward. to let that warmth link in with the green as I come down here and take the black out. I'm going to let that warm merge a little with the greens. Started off a bit hesitantly and slowly and as I'm gaining more momentum I'm becoming bolder with my brush strokes and the work. I don't need to be warm here and there, it will be required as well. Just bring things forward a bit, I push them back. So I'm using some much warmer colours. I'll try the, I haven't used the yellow oak yet, I need to be using that soon. And let's try putting the warmer yellow oak against the light up here, which I was cleaning to do earlier. Yeah, a nice, there we go, that's lovely. Plenty of it, I want it really thick because I've got to really lather my paint on now. It's a much more golden yellow, and so it's going to work beautifully against this light background and make those lovely yellow, um, lemon yellow leaves look cool, you see, against the light. As the softer colour comes down here, and the way that the ball just shines across there and starts to come up in the field as well. It's much warmer and there. I'm going to bring those warm yellows here here, come onto the foreground as the leaves come down. And through into this burnt sienna. I should have more lighter leaves as well in a moment, this will all happen. Bits of gold coming in the sun, shining across Bits of the tree as it comes down. Bits the brush marks about what you're painting. As I'm painting in between grass here, I'm going to start painting grass-like marks and then where it's leaf-like I'm going to put in more leafy marks. Nice and magenta and white. It really starts to fade into the rooms of it. Almost cascading like a waterfall through it here. And it's also reflecting it on the trees up here. The sun is catching through here and making this lovely, I can get it, light magenta in the air. Uh, the trunks here a bit. You can see how thickly I'm using the paint now. It's much, much more impassable. I actually build these forms up now. When you've got the colour on the brush, if you see it elsewhere, then there's the time to put it in. There's pizza coming up into here as well. Shining down through there, and they start to pull everything together. And they're also even shining in the grasses here. Lots of little brush strokes, gradually putting one colour against another. Put the right colours in the right places and the right shapes, and hopefully the picture is going to appear. One colour which if I put a warm on it's going to make the pools cooler. So if I start to put more warm into there and the pools in the background will seem cooler. And then these deeper darks down right here we haven't got, let's go back to some darks. I'll take some Prussian blue and a bit of burnt in and I'm now going to start mixing a few lovely darks down these. Rocks and things here. Find them a bit more. Okay. 
passion and don't see any at the moment to make a very dark, possibly as dark as I can actually go in this painting, but a few more lights in yet to bring the dark out. Now the painting starts to take shape, we can actually start to work more details. The light has totally changed up here now, the sun has gone behind some more trees and uh, I've got to look into painting this background a lot more differently. But we need this sort of blue grey now, which has changed colour as well in the meantime with the sun going behind the trees. Um, so what do I need? Oh, I'm going to take some cerulean and magenta again and just see how light it is. It's not fire. Hopefully this green will work so it's so hard to play against. Play with these, these greys mixed with our browns and Get the feeling of stones and rocks here. So here we've at last found some autumn colours to paint. It's gorgeous. Creams. This is lemon yellow again and white, and bringing in through here. And we're getting lighter and lighter now with the sunlight breaking through these leaves. I can afford to paint much lighter tones now. Now let's go back to some emeralds. I'm going to have to pick up some of these stronger greens coming across the. Let's put some yellow over the dark green. I think we can make a nice mossy damper. There's pure cerulean into the coming. Hello, John. Hey, no. I'm well on the way to being able to finish now. Let's just try and make some very, very light orange. I'm going to change down brushes now to be slightly finer. The thing I want to do is to whip in some more of these branches, these darker branches, if I can. But this, again, this, this would be the advantages of acrylics. The acrylics would dry by now and I could put these darks through much more easily. And bring these edges of these roots up and around. Just put them the tree here. I'm starting to feel some ferns in the distance as well. And that's the leaf that was shining out here. It's catching the light from this late. A mid afternoon light, autumn light now. In fact. Now, I've got to make a very light, almost well, turquoise blue to catch the reflections on these glasses. Let's just see if I can do that. If the oil paint underneath is going to allow me to. to do that, because we've got these beautiful glasses coming up. Here. And the paint's trying to kill it underneath. I can just bring in some lighter colours here. So similarly in blue now, a bit of turquoise. And just start to try and find some of these glasses. And the difference in the marks is important because we've got these big strident marks but now I'm starting to bring a few glasses in. We're going to have a few glassy marks brought out from them. So I'm using what I've got here, these little blocks of green, to bring the glasses out of. Getting a bit cooler now. The sun has gone behind my oats. And now let's just see if we can bring out that sparkling water a little more back here with a bit of this very light blue. Let's see if it's different. And that just help. Let's bring out pink actually, but still. One more cream. Lighter, perhaps very, very light blue, just sparkling on through here. It's 
far from down to here. So we're on our final marks, I suppose, really. Take a break. We need to just have a little walk. Been sort of too long, so we need just a little break. Excuse me a moment. What I've been painting now. Ooh. About two hours, three hours. Just long enough to have a seat. Right, even a few minutes walk just shows me some of the things I need. And I do need some stronger yellows coming in. I need it a bit sunnier. Let's just see if we can get these lovely bits of light yellow leaf. Stronger bits of yellow leaf just coming in. The pure colour. As soon as I hit that mud, which it is if I put it in, not going to be pure colour. We need pure colours over here. So I'm using the thick, thick everybody paint now. I'm really slabbing on the paint, trying to capture the bits of leaf that are just absent. Those yellows do help to make it sunny and put it together a bit more. And just now I was talking about orange, it's just what we can do with it. I haven't used any cadmium oranges yet. We can use cadmium red and orange. Let's take some cadmium orange and try and get a nice clean bright orange. Put a touch of white into it and see how orange we can, we can go. It might just make a difference here and there. Put some white on the leaves. Yes. See the difference that's doing now. So just giving it a bit of warmth that we haven't got. We have to take a bit of cadmium red with it. And just mix those together. See how warm it can go. Which of these colours which I haven't done yet. So you can see how that red works straight away there. Really brings this whole thing forward. Use those to be really strong. Right. Too strong there. Yeah. Which makes the background seem cooler, which is exactly what I was saying about the bit of aroma here, of that animal. The whole light has changed. Going right round behind, but it's not bothering me too much. So now I look at these cooler um, greens behind. I think they're almost on the way to calling that finished, you know. Almost a fairy tale. It's a bit of being tweak. It's become tweak. and give it to the light in the background a little more yet. Because it is almost a fairy tale light that's going on in here now. It's beautiful. Not to overwork it. It's a painting, fairly figurative painting, full of light. And I don't think, I wouldn't have got the same effect using colour in my painting life as I was intending to. Autumn colours. And there we go. Enough, but I'll be too much. So it's not to do. Well, there we go. I think we'll call that one done. That's the view. And here's the finished painting. So here's the finished painting. And uh, I think tomorrow I've got enough paint left. I might have a go to call up now for a painting now just to use up the paint. This one just didn't deserve it, it was too textural and wanted to use brushes. So again we're choosing the method and the uh, technique for the medium and for the subject. How beautiful a place can you get to paint? Uh, I keep saying, come and join me here, have a painting holiday with me. Well the light's now totally gone, it's very even, but still Extremely beautiful, as you can see. So we go home.